Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we would like to find the derivative of the nth titration of x for all natural numbers and then also including n is equal to zero with that notation. So anybody new not, might be thinking that I wrote the exponent on the wrong side, shouldn't be on the left side. Well, the left side is, of course, that brings out the terminology, the titration, which is a special hyperoperation such that the exponentiation is iterated. So repeating so on and so forth. For example, if I have something like n is equal zero, that's just going to be one. n is equal one is just x. Um, n is equal two is x to the power x. n is equal three x to the power x to the power x, and then so on and so forth with that construction of that definition. So, of course, we would like to know what that derivative is for the nth titration such that there has to exist some closed formula with whatever choice of n of the natural number systems that we plug in. So if that does is the case, then of course we can make that claim and we have to prove that by using mathematical induction to see that there is exists that close formula for this following nth titration of x. So if you actually graph this for the any nth titration of x for the natural numbers, it's actually continuous everywhere for the positive reals. Of course, for n is equal one and n is equal zero, it's actually positive, it's actually continuous everywhere, but specifically for anything for two or higher, then yeah, it's, it's continuous everywhere for the positive reals. So x strictly greater than zero, in other words. How this video will be outlined is, of course, as mentioned, that we're just going to plug in some numbers, then do the derivative, see what's kind of sort of close relationship or correlation there is, just to the point where we can find that claim and with mathematical induction involved to, you know, close this out. So anyway, with that, let's actually just jump right in. So n is equal to zero, as I mentioned, that's just going to be equal to one. So but now, of course, we already know what the derivative is, but let's actually just write that out. We're going to write everything out in full. So that means that'll give us the zero titration of x. In other words, that's just equal to one, but the derivative of that is just going to equal zero. So let's move on to n is equal one. So that's going to yield us with just the derivative of x, which of course, that's just going to be equal to one. So what about n is equal to two? So what this yields out, it's actually a pretty nice calculus exercise when you're dealing stuff with logarithmic differentiation, x to the power x. So of course, you can actually rewrite this in a way that you can actually apply implicit differentiation. I'm going to write this a little bit differently. So I have the derivative of, now this is going to be written as e to the power ln of x to the power x. In other words, that's pretty similar to say that, of course, using the, you know, the exponent rules with log, log properties that that can be the same thing as e to the power x multiplied by ln of x. Then of course, we'll just write this as the same way this is by exponentiation properties. This is differentiation specifically. So it's e to the power x times ln of x. Then we multiply with the derivative of what's in the exponent x to the power or x times ln of x, which of course, as you can see that we're gonna actually have to apply the product rule over here. So this yields us e to the x times ln of x. Well, in other words, that's the same thing as just x to the power x and then use the product rule over here that's just going to be multiplied with ln of x and then add this with 1. So let's move on to the n equals 3 case. So keep going. So that means I have the derivative of now x to the power x to the power x. So of course, just applying that same thing. So derivative dx of e to the x to the power x and then multiply by ln of x. Then in other words, if we put this out yet again, so that will have that will yield us with x to the power x to the power x, which of course we just multiply with the derivative of now just multiply the derivative of um, x ln of x, well, x to the power x and then multiply with ln of x, which now yields us with x to the power x to the power x. So we already know what x to the power x is the derivative of that. So we're actually just taking a copy of what we did and just substitute this back in which will yield us with x to the power x to the power x, and then now we just multiply this with x to the power x, then times ln of x, add this with x to the power x, close this off, then this is ln of x, add this with x to the power x, and then divide by x, which then this will just yield us x to the power x to the power x, then we multiply with x to the power x, that's just factoring out this term here, and then multiply with ln square of x plus ln of x and then add this with 1 divided by x. So now moving on, let's move on to the n equals 4 case. So we'll stop after this number. So that means I have d dx of now the titration of 4, so x to the power x to the power x to the power x. Then this will now yield us, so do the same thing, equals the derivative dx of e to the power x to the power x to the power x and then times ln of x. 
So we actually do the same thing over here. So this is x to the power x to the power x to the power x. Multiply with the derivative of x to the power x to the power x and then multiply by ln of x. And so we'll of course performing this through. So I have x to the power x to the power x to the power x. Then now this is, this is going to be the long one here. x to the power x to the power x multiply by x to the power x. Then now multiply with ln squared of x, add this with ln of x, add this with 1 divided by x, multiply with ln of x, and then add this with x to the power x to the power x, and then divide it by x to close that off. And now simplifying things even further, so that will yield us with x to the power x to the power x to the power x, multiply by x to the power x to the power x, multiply with x to the power x, and then this is simply just, fact, of course, again, factoring out. And if you're wondering with this derivative, this is actually just taking place of what we did previously. So we can actually make that substitution. So yielding this. So ln cube of x, add this with ln square of x, add this with ln of x divided by x, and then plus 1 divided by x to the power x, and then multiply by x. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty long here. So you can probably see like, how, how are we able to find some sort of close formula out of that? So to reiterate everything, so we found that for n equals zero, then that's our derivative. n equals one, that's one. n is equal to two, so this is our derivative right here. n is equal to three, so this is our derivative right over here. And for n is equal to four, our derivative is expanded out to the following right here. So if you can keep playing around with this as many times as you want, infinitely forever if you want, but now we're actually gonna make the claim and say that after so many uh, trial and error, if we wanna put it this way, it's not really much of an error, but after so many repeated exponentiations, we're gonna make the claim that the derivative of the tetration, the nth tetration of x is going to equal to the following. So get ready for this one. We're gonna have that this is the partial product series. So this is upper index is n, i is equal to two of the ith tetration of x then multiply with our partial sum, our upper index being n minus one, and then k is equal to zero of ln k, the ln of x to the k power, and then divided by the partial sum, our upper index being the n minus two minus k, and then our lower index being m is equal to zero of the nth tetration of x. So we're gonna say that, of course, Again, of course, we're gonna say that that's our claim. So now in order to justify this and say that this is indeed our close formula for the derivative of the tetration, we must prove this by applying some mathematical induction. So that next step, let's actually get to that. Okay, so of course, our, from the last clip, our claim is that we found that, found rather, is that the nth tetration of x is equal to this following expansion over here with a combination of the partial product and the partial sum with, of course, another partial product right here. So with this, in order to show that this is indeed our closed formula for the, the derivative of the nth tetration of n, we must do the in math induction. So of course, we need to do the base case, assume that n is equal to true for the natural numbers, and then we just show the n plus one case works, and then we are done from there. So let's actually start off with the base case. So of course, we'll start with the base case of um, n is equal to zero. So I'll also do this for n is equal to one too. Depending on some textbooks, zero is included part of the natural number system. So I'll, also, I'll do the same thing for n is equal to one as well. Okay, so if I plug in zero back here, so that means d and then dx and the derivative, so the zero tetration of x. So I'll write this as the partial product. So zero, i is equal to i x. Then if I plug zero for here, so that means this is negative one on the top, k is equal zero of ln k of x, and then divided by, so now the partial product over here is gonna be, so negative two minus k, m is equal zero of the nth titration of x. So this actually looks a little weird because for one, we have that the lower index is actually a lot bigger than it is the upper index. So what does that imply? This is actually what's known as the empty product. And so that means if you're actually thinking about this, you're going backwards and taking zero entries, which you know nothing exists from there. So that would have to mean that for product series specifically, this is actually gonna be equal to one. And so you'll see the same thing for the partial product too. This is what's known as the empty sum. We're going backwards yet again. So a negative one and then k is equal to zero. For the sum is actually going to approach zero. And same thing for over here. So this is going to be one because we have negative two minus k for m is equal to zero. So that means I have that this is going to be one times zero, which indeed is going to equal zero, which we actually did from the first um, number back back over there that it is indeed equal to zero. 
So now let's actually do the same thing for n is equal one, just to get a better picture. So the derivative of the first titration of x, so I'll plug this, so this is gonna be one, i is equal to two of the i th of x, the i titration of x. So this is gonna be zero over here, k is equal zero, ln of, ln of x to the power k and then divide it by. So this is now going to be negative one minus k, m is equal zero of the, x, the nth titration of x. And as you can see from the partial product series over here, yet again, it's the same conclusion that this is an empty product. So this is going to be one. What's nice is that k is equal to zero that fits in that term. So we can evaluate something out of that. And same thing for over here, that's still an empty product. So that's zero is going to be one and multiply with, now just plug this for zero, so ln of x to the zero power, that's just gonna be one. So one times one divided by one from over here, so indeed it's just equal to one, which is, hey, this is actually exactly just from what we did earlier. Okay, so now that I base case out of the way, so I'll just put a check here and a check here. So now we actually have to assume that our claim is true for any natural number, that it holds true for the natural numbers n. So let's actually write that first. And so with this, now we need to show that n plus one is true. So therefore, in other words, I'm gonna write this out in full. So that means the derivative of x of the n plus of the n plus one titration of x is indeed just going to equal to the following. So now this is gonna be written as the same thing just before. Now just plug in the n plus one term. Okay, so now we're everything over here. So now let's actually show that case. So how we start this out, let's actually start by definition. And of course that d dx of n plus one titration of x is indeed, in other words, the same thing as written as the derivative of e to the power. So the nth titration of x times ln of x, then, or in other words, you can write that part as the same thing as ln of x to the power, the nth titration of x. Then now we actually just apply the same thing with those rules that we did earlier. So that's in other words, the same thing as the n plus one titration of x and then just multiply with the derivative of x of the nth titration of x times ln of x and then add this with the nth titration of x and then divided by x. So we, re we have the d over d, d dx of the nth titration of x. We assume that that claim is true. So we just have to just substitute this back into here. So now that will yield us n plus one titration of x, then just substitute this back in here. So now I'm just gonna write the series in full. So let's just cut to the next clip. Okay, just like that, we fill this in. And then I just multiply the element of x back into here. So that's why we end up with a k plus one. So now let's actually do some simplifying. So n plus one titration of x, put that back into the product series. So that means I can just increase the upper index by one. So now that will yield us the upper index n plus one and then i is equal to two of the ith titration of x. Then because of that, then we, because we did that whole distribution, then so we can actually apply a bunch of re-indexing. So that means this is gonna go from n, and then this changed the lower index to k is equal to one. And of course, that'll also change the ln function. So that'll just put back to ln to the power k of x. And then that'll change the upper index of our partial product series, specifically n minus two, and then minus, and then quantity one, or k, I'm sorry, k minus one, then so m is equal to zero of the mth titration of x. And of course I'm distributing, and I'm just distributing the n plus one titration x over here. So that means I have the nth, I have the n plus one titration of x, then multiplied with the nth titration of x divided by x. And then to get a little clever with it, let's actually write this back as ln of zero to the x, which of course that's still gonna be the same thing as one. So why we do something like this, you'll see in just a bit. Okay, so the last step is a little bit interesting here. So of course the product series is still the same over here. So I'm gonna write this out, n plus one, then i equals two of i, i titration of x. So what's nice is interestingly, I can actually factor out that same product series into here and then that'll change things a little bit nicely. So. Um, for the first first things first is that this summation over here is still gonna remain the same. And then if you actually think about this because I actually factored this out, you can go, go through this in the long term and expand this out yourself to see that this is indeed the same thing as written as ln of zero to the x. That's why we wrote it like this to get a little clever because you'll see that the following, so right, let me finish writing the next partial step, is that the partial, partial product series over here is upper index is n minus one and then the upper index is m is equal to zero of the nth titration of x. 
the nth titration of x. So if you expand this out, uh, well rather, if you distribute this product series back into here, it actually indeed yields the same thing as this expansion in the long run. So that's a little clever trick. Well, not exactly clever. What was really clever is the ln of zero x because it actually shares the same thing. And as what you notice is that everything shares all the same thing in terms of the series. And we can actually, this is actually evaluated at the k equals zero term. So therefore I can actually just put this back into the series. And so that actually completes our um, mathematical induction because if you put this back in, this is actually yields out to the same thing as the claim, but just now evaluate the x, the n plus one term. So now we have the infinite sum, or rather, not the infinite, the n plus one partial sum. It's gonna be n on the top, then k is equal to zero, and then ln to the power k of x, and then divided by the product series of for the upper index, n minus one minus k, and then m is equal to zero of the nth titration of x, which is indeed exactly just as this yields the following, just like that. And therefore, we did found our claim and indeed find that nice close formula. So let me actually write this, um, finish that last part out. This is equal to the derivative of the n plus one titration of x, which indeed does complete this proof. And we indeed found our little nice close form of the generalization of the derivative of the n plus one titration of x, just like that. And so there we have it, a pretty nice formula, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.